Okay, good morning again. I see people still logging in, so I'm going to give it just a, uh, a few seconds here before we get started. Uh, again, this is the second presentation of the What's New for Top Solid uh, 7.16. Um, again, my name is Bill Gens. I'm the Sales and Technical Director here at Top Solid USA. I'm joined by both Joe Hart, our Technical Manager, and Mike Kay, our Sales Manager. Uh, during the presentation, if anyone has any questions, please type them into the question bar in your uh, interface there, and we'll be sure to answer as many of those questions as we can. Okay, so let's begin. So in uh, this next section of webinars, we are gonna focus on uh, top solid design, and we're gonna talk about some new features within the sketcher, the shape menus, the surfacing menus, and the free shape command. Let's just dive right in. So what's new in the Sketcher? So we've done a, a lot of, I think, really nice functional improvements in the Sketcher this year. Uh, just to begin with, uh, we're gonna take a look at Contour first. There's a couple of things that we did in Contour. Uh, first is we added this length option so that when you're sketching a Contour, you can type a length in and it will automatically dimension it once you place the second point. Okay. The second option is while you're sketching a contour, you can hover over another segment to borrow or automatically create an axis that's parallel to it so you can sketch dynamically parallel to that object. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go into top solid, go to the sketch section. I'm just gonna create myself a little a little part here real quick. Start a contour and I'm gonna start sketching. Now, first thing I wanna do here, if you notice, my length is activated and the cursor is blinking there. So I'm gonna say that I would like this to be inch and a quarter, okay? And now when I click at that angle, it's an inch and a quarter. Now I want this next one to be a half inch. And I'm gonna come over here horizontal and it's a half inch. Now maybe I wanna come down three quarters of an inch, okay? Now notice my rubber band line is showing much bigger, but it's coming back to Okay, which is great. Now from here, I'm gonna come back up. I'm gonna come back over. I'm gonna come back over. And now here, I wanna sketch parallel to this. So watch, I hover on that for a second. And now we see this axis and now we can finish our sketch. Okay, so kind of cool. That's item number one. Now let's delete all that. And I'm just gonna create some random stuff here just because you all will like this. In the trim command, again, pay attention whether you're on keep or delete, there's a new dynamic way to trim, and that is you don't have to just select the objects anymore like this, okay? Just hold your selection button down and you can drag dynamically to get a dynamic trim to take place, okay? Let's hop back to our presentation. All right, next. A couple of other options. Uh, we've added the special inputs to the path around face mode of the edge copy from the 3D sketch. I'll show you a sample of that here in a sec. Um, in the fillet command, when you're doing uh, the same fillet on all vertices, for example, um, you have the new equality constraint option. We'll show you that. And then with the three point by base rectangle, you have a new height option. So. Let's go take a look at how all those function. So first of all, let's go to our fillet command because I have a sketch here. I can say here that I want an eighth inch fillet without the equality constraint. You get individual dimensions. So you have individual control, right? Now, if I undo all that and I add the equality constraint, now you'll notice that all of them are equal to each other and there's just one dimension. So I change this to 0.25, perfect. Now they're all 0.25, fantastic. Let's get rid of all that for a sec. If I go to my rectangle command and do rectangle by three points, I'm gonna say the height of this is gonna be a half inch. And then I can pick my two points and then I just choose the side I want that rectangle to be on. Perfect. All right, finally, let's get out of this one. Close that out. And now let's go look at the edge copy improvement. So here we have a part, 
right? With different colored faces, for example. Let's say I want all the edges around this greenish uh, face. So I'm gonna go to my 3D sketch. I'm gonna go to edge copy. And here we've had path around face for a while and you could go and select these faces and whatnot. And you know, you'd eventually get there, but it takes a lot of selection for me. So the improvement is we've added the special inputs here and you can use any of these selection filters. So for example, I wanna select by color. Boom. And like that, we now have all the edges surrounding that color face selected. Green check to finish and off you go. All right, let's go back to our presentation. Next, there's a brand new command called pixelate, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it was a request made to us to make a way to turn a photo into a pixelated object so that we can manufacture it and have it still look like the photo. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back, top solid, we'll close out of this one. And let's go down to our pixelation and I'm gonna choose lion. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna open up my entities tree here. I can go to my entities and I'm gonna turn off my sketch. Okay, so we have Pictures. Okay, let's just get rid of it, then, shall we? Perfect. We have our picture, okay? So you have a picture of whatever, and now we're going to create a sketch. So when I go to create my sketch, I'm going to get out of here, and you can either go to the sketch operations profile batch and get your pixelating command right there, or your sketch operators or this pull-down menu. You'll see it here as well. I'm going to select my picture, right? And if I just accept the defaults here and hit go, it's gonna automatically pick different size holes to represent that picture. And if I go and turn off the picture, you're gonna see it looks just like our tiger, or pardon me, our lion, okay? Now, how can you control this? because right now, if we zoom up on this and we select stuff, you can see the diameters are all, you know, non-standard size circles. Well, the way you control it, you can go to edit pixelating, is you can type in whatever values you want. So for example, I'm gonna say I want 32nd, maybe here I want a 16th, here I'm gonna go to an eighth inch, maybe here I'll go to 3 sixteenths, quarter, oops, pardon me, Turned off my number block, hold on. There we go. Perfect. F, you get the idea, right? And now when we click OK, it's gonna use those specific size holes or circles to create the contrast of this object. Now, what can you use this for? It's an excellent question. So what you can use this for is uh, these are all just simple circles, so you can use these with the uh, drilling command to drill by uh, circle, drill by point, and from there you can then take this into Top Solid Cam and you could use Top Solid Punch, Top Solid Laser, regular Top Solid Cam to just drill this and create this pixelated artwork dynamically. Okay? Perfect. Now, let's keep on looking. From there, we have the 2D Sketch uh, Revolution Dimension command that we have renamed to Half Part Dimension. And we did this just to um, help people that are coming from different softwares recognize the command. That's all. Uh, on top of that, we added three new types uh, that are available for this, which are Half Part, Large Diameter, and Full Part. Okay. And it's just these three modes that give you the ability to then um, better control or decide how to control how you're dimensioning your half part, uh, half part values. So let's go back into here. Yep. Apparently I clicked close on accident. So let's go find top solid. 
We'll launch that here. Sorry about that. Fire right back up here. While we're talking, well, I'm letting that load. Uh, the other improvement, and I'll show it right away here, is to the planar and spatial sketch options. It is now possible to permanently hide the grid as well as to control how the grid looks. So let's go into here. Let's go to our what's new in design. Minimize that over to here. Back to our sketch here. And let's go to this part to begin with. All right. So if I edit this sketch, I'm going to delete my half part dimensions. You can see I have them shown in a couple of different ways. Uh, if I go up here to half part dimension, that's normal. These are your three modes. So you have half part, which is perfect, right? So that's how half part has normally worked. Now you also have long diameter. So if it's a really large diameter, it's gonna be shown this way versus back to the center. And then you have full diameter, right? So if I go here, this is gonna show the full diameter section. Perfect, now we're done. Now, how is that useful to you? Well, at the end of the day, we can always go into our sketch, or pardon me, into our drawing of this, and we can go to detailing and we can project annotations of this view. And that's gonna project all of those dimensions. And you can see that all of those dimensions are still carrying over the way that they were in design. So it can be a little bit easier way of getting the detailed drawing of these revolved parts done, where you're actually bringing forth those dimensions from design. Next, let's talk about grid mode. So if I'm in a sketch, I start a sketch, you'll notice by default, you don't see the dots anymore. And the reason for that is because I have turned them off. So let me show you what I mean. If I go to my, uh, pardon me, not my entities, I wanna go to my options. Let's go up here to options. We'll dock that right there. And let's go ahead into uh, sketch and we'll go ahead and edit the planar sketch. And right here, you have this new option for grid. Right now it's set to none. I can have it as points. If I click okay, we start a sketch. You're back to those points that you're used to, okay? If I go back into here, I can also have this as lines. Okay, so now you see more of like a grid paperwork, which makes it a little bit easier to visualize those grids or those uh, snap points, right? You even have the ability to have that turned on in a spatial sketch. So for example, I can go here and say, you know what? I want lines in my spatial sketch. And if we go here to 3D and we start a sketch, okay? Right now, yes, we are on my XY plane, but maybe I want to switch to my XZ plane or my YZ plane. So it just helps with visualizing where you're at in that 3D environment, okay? So again, nice, useful improvement. Let's go back to our presentation. All right, uh, last couple of things for the sketcher is you now have the ability to uh, create both parabolic and hyperbolic arcs. This is in the other curves menu from the sketch pull down menu. Okay, I'll show you that live here in a sec. And then when it comes to symbols, you can now use the standard control drag and drop to make copies of those symbols. Now I'm gonna show this in a part document, but you can use symbols in a draft document or you know anywhere where you have access to a sketch. Right. Uh, just the big thing to note about this dynamic drag and drop, it does not work for symbols with geometric drivers. Let's go have a look. So we'll go back into this one and let's talk hyperbolic arcs. So we'll create a sketch. Perfect. And if we go, you can access the parabola, uh, the parabola arc or the hyperbolic arc right here. Okay. Again, you pick, you create your parabola or your hyperbolic arc. It's, it is what it is. And then if I go to make a symbol, all right, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna add my approved symbol, and here I'm gonna hold my control button down, grab it, drag and drop a copy. Okay, so again, just a way to speed up the use of symbols and 
Also the ability to create hyperbolic and parabolic arcs. Perfect. All right, let's go back to our presentation. So that's the major things for sketch. Let's take a look at shape next, shall we? So in shape, first thing that I want to talk about is the uh, an improvement made to the calculation of the enclosing cylinder. Uh, the axis is now calculated fully automatically. Okay, let's go have a look. So we'll go look at shapes, enclosing cylinder. So we have oh, what looks like a, a lifter solid, right? For a mold, I go to shape and I go up here to enclosing cylinder. You'll notice that the orientation axis is grayed out. You can choose one if you want, but you don't have to anymore. It'll automatically find the best one. Okay, so you got that. Um, actually, I'll show you one more really quick. I go here and add a drilling. Get back to here. There we go. Weird. If I go here and add a drilling, right? And I want to drill a hole, and I'm just going to keep the hole simple. Okay. If I set this to have a flat bottom, you now have the ability to put in corner radius down there. Oops, didn't realize I'm it. Okay. So you now have a corner radius option on flat bottom drillings. Awesome. All right. Let's go back to the presentation. Next. Uh, we've added a couple of really, really cool uh, new improvements to the draft command. First of all, you have a step with plane option, and then you have the ability to use what's called split face. Okay, and it's more fun to show these live, so let's just go ahead and do these live. So I'm going to do this one first. All right, so I have a plane down here, right, and in some shape. So I'm going to go to dra uh, shape command here, and I'll go to drafting. And I'm gonna say it went up five degrees. I'm gonna say my reference plane is here. And then we'll use selection filter here to do root face so we can grab all of those vertical faces. Right now, this is what you expect, okay? But the new command here is split faces. So I can go here and say, you know what? I want both faces split. So I wanna go plus and minus draft. I only want the top. I only want the bottom. Okay, so you have a lot of really, really cool ways to control that. Okay. Next, let's look at another sample. So in this case, I have a part, right? And if I go look at my draft option, all right, I'm choosing this bottom face and here, I'm sorry, let me delete this. I think I left it on there from practicing. So let's go here and we're gonna use draft with step, okay? My reference face is that one. My faces are gonna be here. If you use the right thing. There we go. And the plane is like so, that way. And now my reference faces will be everything around here. You can see it's adding that little step that's needed in order to apply the draft at the plane that I chose, okay? Now, even if we add other faces inside the model, it's gonna do what's necessary. For example, if I select here, you can see it's adding faces. It's adding faces. So you have the ability to really get in here and do some pretty interesting and creative things with these commands to quickly get the result you're looking for in your geometry. Cool. All right. Finally, um, on the enclosing block uh, command, we've updated it to allow it to work on polyhedral shapes. So from an STL, an FBX file, whatever. So any polyhedral shape, you can calculate the enclosing block around, which is now handy if you want to machine the polyhedral shape, right? So let's take a look. I'll go back to here and I'll open up my forklift polyhedron. And just for those of you not familiar with that term, if I go to visualization and turn this on, this was imported from an STL model, for example, maybe it's a scan, a 
3D scan of something or it came from a 3D printing software, who knows. Um, but at the end of the day, we want to do something with this object, right? So I'm gonna turn those off. If I go to my shape command and go to enclosing block, you can see it will auto calculate very quickly around the extents of that polyhedron. Perfect. All right, I think there's a question that just popped up. Does the shape have to be fully valid? Example of an imported solid is, in, uh, in, is not perfect. Um, polyhedrons by default are, they don't have to be perfect, no. They can have gaps and holes and whatever, it doesn't matter. So, all right, let's go back to our presentation. That's the major improvements on the shape side. Let's go look at surfaces. Uh, we did a couple of neat things in surfacing this year. Uh, first, in the type command, we've added linear variation as an option to control on rotation and scale. And uh, then also on the by plane, uh, pardon me, on the imprint command, we have a new imprint by plane. All right, so let's have a look at both of those. Here we go. All right, so let's look at our imprint first. So here I have what looks like a sheet metal part. Uh, it's just to have an inside and an outside profile, right? So if I go to my surfacing tab and I go to imprint, the shape to modify is this. The I want to imprint by plane, right? So I'm gonna use that plane and turn off that. So it just selects all the faces. Now, what's cool here is you got some interesting controls. I can say imprint all faces that intersect with the plane or just the outside faces or just the inside faces. And at the end of the day, if I leave it on internal, for example, you'll see it divided those faces up nicely. Okay, but the outside faces still unmodified. Next. So pipe command. Maybe you guys have used this command. If I go to my edit on that option, and of course we have a simple drive curve and we have our simple section curve. Okay. The new commands here have to do with the scaling factors and the twist factors. So for example, my initial scale is one to one. My final scale I'm going to say is one and a half. Okay. We'll even go two. Right now, it is doing nonlinear variation. If I activate this, now it's doing linear variation. So you can see it's a straight line transition from the one to one scale to the two to one scale. Just depends on how you want to end this. If you're doing nonlinear, what I want you to picture is there is a line perpendicular here, and this is tangently coming off there. Same thing down here, tangently coming off here. And same thing up here, when it gets to the end, picture a line up there and a line over here. And this is gonna be exactly tangent to that. So depending on what you're doing with this surface, it gives you better flow control to the adjacent surfaces. Even if we complicate things, right? You say we're starting at zero degrees and we're ending at 90. You can do this with or without linear variation. So again, you can see it dramatically changes how that surface is generated or solid. Depends on what you're doing. Okay. Perfect. Close out of that. We'll go back to our presentation. All right, next, we have something called marking. And for those of you that are keenly paying attention and observing, there's also something new that's in here. And if you look, it's hiding right in plain sight. Top solid learning. What is it? Well, let's click on it and find out. Of course, this is coming up on my other screen, so let me bring it over here. This is Top Solid's new e-learning platform. Okay? It is not available yet to the public. It will be available soon, and as soon as it is, we will send out emails Maybe hold a webinar on how to access it, how to use it. But this is just to show you that we're taking the education side of things very seriously and we are adding a much needed e-learning platform. So the e-learning platform to start with is going to have things like um, what's new videos for all the new, uh, all the new features. 
Uh, there will be courses on here as well. And as this progresses in the coming weeks and months, you guys will learn a lot about this. Uh, but to give you an idea, if I come in here and I hit play, I'm going to minimize the sound in that one. So this is a video explaining how the new marking command functions. And the whole idea behind the marking command is it is to allow you to automate identifying all the parts in your assemblies, okay? And for example, this marking command could be to put the manufacturing index on each part, the balloon number, for example, right? Or you could engrave it with the material or whatever, and maybe this is laser etched on the parts, or maybe it's engraved because it's coming off of a milling machine or a lathe. But at the, end of the, at the end of the day, the whole idea here is this marking command is used to allow you to quickly identify and create markings, okay? Now, let me kick out of this thing, and I'm gonna go in the top solid, and I'll give you an example of it, okay? So I go to that assembly, and I come in here to modeling, you're gonna see that I have the marking command. There are two ways, two main ways to use this. The first is a manual way. Okay, and that's what I'm gonna do in this sample. The second is an automated way where, for example, in the components, like for this post, this is a family of posts, okay? You could come in here and you could identify where you want the marking to be, what characteristics you want it to pass, and so on, so that it automatically comes up with the markings in the assembly when you include the component or you can mark on the fly, and that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna to go to marking, it's gonna take a sec, and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say, let's mark this part to begin with. I'm gonna zoom up in the bottom corner and we'll locate right there. What do you wanna mark with? I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna look for index. Again, this is just a way to filter through all the very various possibilities. I'm gonna go with manufacturing index, okay? And from here, we're gonna to go to uh, maybe make it 10 millimeters. If we look at this thing, maybe we want this to be rotated 90, and maybe we want to be 10 and 10, like so. Okay, so we'll go to there, perfect. And then I'm gonna click up here to the next one. And I'll go to my next part, and just click. We'll go up to 10 and 10, and mark it as we want. Notice it's a different number now. We'll come over here, mark the next one, Let's get the idea. It's pulling from the bill of material the right information. Okay? And like that, you can see it, it's actually imprinting those onto the face. And that'll carry forward nicely then into drafting. It'll carry forward into whatever manufacturing process you're going to use to make said part. Now, let's see what's next. All right, the last thing we have in uh, this webinar anyways has to do with free shape. Okay, so let's go down into free shape. So these are just a couple of small improvements. Uh, first is a progress bar has been added at the bottom of the screen. So when you're extracting a bunch of drillings into a group, you have an idea of how long it's gonna take to do so, okay? The other option is a new drop-down list allows you to choose the standard for tapped holes. Let me show you. Back to top solid, we can close this thing. And let's go down to free shape. We'll open this up. All right, so we have this imported model. I think I was screwing around with this, throwing some chamfers and fillets on it, but whatever. I'm gonna go into free shape and we're just gonna go to modify. Okay, so for those of you not familiar with free shape, uh, let me give you a, a quick idea of what it can be used for. So free shape can be used for a bunch of things. Typically, it's gonna be used on imported parts, but it's not limited to that. You can use it on top solid design parts as well. Uh, but it's gonna be used on imported parts to help identify uh, drillings, features, things like that, so that you can further automate the manufacturing side. The other advantage of it is it's identifying them as top solid features, so you have more robust control over modifying. The other thing you can do with it is you can actually add driving parameters back to faces, to shift features. There's all sorts of fun things you can do with free shape. If you haven't spent time in it, I do recommend you play around for a little bit to get an idea. Now, 
Let's start with extracting some drillings, why not? So I'm gonna go to extract drillings. I'm gonna do it as groups. This, by the way, is that ability for you to say, I want you to map these to the nearest inch tap hole or whatever, metric tap hole, so you can choose your standards there. But now here, I'm just gonna go select all my groups. So maybe we'll select these as well, why not? Okay, you can select all sorts of features in here. And then we'll go with that one. Oh, it doesn't like that one, that's fine. You, what about you? Nope, doesn't like you either. All right, so it's probably because it's on a different plane. But let's click OK, here's that progress bar down here. And then watch the history tree because it's identifying all of those as top solid drillings. It's creating uh, sketch points to drive the locations of them. When we validate out of them, you can see the drillings are back, but you can actually go in and modify these drillings now. You can change them to whatever you need them to be. Okay, maybe your customer fat fingered a value so it wasn't correct, so you need to type in the correct diameter for these ones. Whatever it is, okay? Okay, now, from there, validate, we're done, that's that. Okie dokie, so let's go look at uh, our PowerPoint. I think that was the last thing, but I wanna be sure. Yep, that's the last thing. So, again, thank you for attending this webinar. Um, if anyone has any additional questions that haven't been answered yet, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Uh, just so you guys know, we're going to continue with what's new updates for Top Solid Design starting at 1 p.m. today, uh, Central Daylight. Um, Bill, there was one question from Mr. Mickelson with regard to a new complex sketching. All right, let me go, let me scroll up the list here and have a look at it. Second, does the shape have to be fully valid? Example, if an imported solid is imperfect, has holes and valid points. Is that, is that the one that we're referring to? No, is there anything in development for more complex gears, helical, hypoid, doubled, et cetera? Ah, uh, there's actually already a, a gear command, so to speak. Uh, there's hyperbolic curves for creating uh, uh, a gear spline, which then you can turn into a repetition to make your gear. Uh, there's also some standard uh, sketches available to make that process faster. That already exists. Uh, as far as uh, helical, we support every type of helical there is. Um, but as far as hypoid and bevel, uh, I would need to see uh, see what you're talking about on those because I'm not familiar with that. Um, I see another one, the sh free shape, remove the existing holes. Uh, it removes the existing holes, it heals them out and it replaces them with top solid fillings. So at the end, if the hole is still there, it's still in the same location, it gives you the ability to identify it. So for example, let's say you import a, a part made in SolidWorks. So it comes in, it's dumb data, right? Uh, but you know that there's tapped holes in there, you know there's reamed holes in there. Uh, if you go through free shape, you can identify those back as tapped holes in top solid and holes with precision in top solid so that when you go to use method-based machining in top solid cam, you click a button and it's 100% recognized, okay? So it's a way to control things. That's, that's one of the whole ideas there. Um, I saw a question there about uh, the, the e-learning. Uh, so guys, regarding the e-learning, the e-learning is in progress right now. Videos are being recorded right now. Uh, some videos will be recorded by our team here in the US. Some videos are recorded by our French team overseas. Uh, we're just trying to propagate it with a lot of good information right now. Like I said, in the coming weeks and months, uh, we're gonna really do a big push on letting you all know how to access it. Uh, we'll look for real feedback from you on what you think of it. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it? Uh, do we need to do something a little bit differently? Um, but rest assured that we are investing heavily in this side right now and will continue to do so moving forward. Of course you do, Mike. <laughs> I don't know if post-processor development will be included in e-learning or not. Um, we'll see. 
like I said, there's there's a lot a lot of topics that need to be covered. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do first, this I can tell you for sure, is uh, all of the what's new videos will be in there as well as uh, we're looking to do a bunch of the entry level training programs. Okay, so that you can go through the training at your own pace and then the advanced training, uh, the goal would still be to be done via an instructor, but even that may get put up there at some point as well. But as you know, there's a lot to do and only so much time in a day. So it will be an ongoing progress and we look forward to your feedback. Alrighty, got some other things. We have someone saying they need some training with Free Shape. We will hook you up with that. All right, what's the expected pricing model? Uh, so for everyone we like, it may be free. For everyone we don't like, it may not be. Again, I'm joking. Uh, we are not yet ready to publish how that's gonna work. I will tell you that my goal is that a portion of it will be free and some of it may be part of a subscription, okay? But again, don't quote me on that because we're still finalizing that process as we're finalizing their training content. Um, what else do we got in here? <laughs> I see. Well, let's see. Um, give away a license and you'll volunteer to contribute training content. That is fantastic news. I will run that up the flagpole and we'll see if that flag flies. <laughs> And uh, let's see, are there any updates to manufacturing data inside solid models? As a matter of fact, there is, but you'll have to tune into the CAM webinars to learn about that. All right. I think now we're just getting into silly questions, which is fine. I'm happy to answer silly questions, but I'm going to stop the recording of this. And uh, I, again, thank everyone for attending. If uh, you guys want to learn more about any of these features, reach out to us. We're happy to help you. Uh, maybe what I need to do is schedule a webinar in the future to showcase things you can do with uh, FreeShape. Because I think that's maybe a portion on the design side that uh, most people don't know about. So, um, did FreeShape remove the existing holes? I, I I believe I answered that before, but yes, it removes them. Here, let me just hop back there really quick and I'll show you. Let's go back to free shape. So here, again, dumb data, other than, like I said, there was a chamfer and a fillet put on these features. Okay, we can even remove those. So here, completely dumb. Let's uh, bassify. So everything in here is like it's an imported model. If I go into free shape, and I come up to here, um, we're going to modify first. There's a couple things you can do. If I go and just go straight to ex extract the drillings, it will take the chamfers on the drillings with it as part of the drilling, okay? Or I can grab all the common chamfers, right? So I can take all of those and try to remove them all in one shot, okay? But let's just do the drillings because that was the question. So if I go here and grab the group of drillings, and these are all the same size drillings right here, and I just click OK, what you're going to see is two things happen in history, OK? This point represents the location of each drilling. This makes it coincident with that face, OK? I could take this, remove that coincident, and move the drilling even if I want. Okay, but if you look in your history tree, it's added or removing. Let's validate this. So it's added or removing, which removed those drillings, right? Then it is adding the drilling group to add them back. And when it adds them back, it adds them back as a top solid drilling. So for example, let's say these aren't at all what I need them to be. So I'm gonna just switch to the tap hole. I'm going to come into my tapping. I'm going to say, you know what? This was supposed to be an inch tapped hole. Why not? And it was supposed to be a 1024 and whatever. And now I've identified it as what it's supposed to be. 
And it's part of the beauty of the free shape command. You have a lot of freedom in it. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make sure that we add free shape to the webinar docket for uh, some point this year so that I can introduce you guys to more ways of manipulating imported parts or even existing parts in Top Solid using this command. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, I, uh, again, I hope everyone has a great morning and our next webinar again will be at 1 p.m. Central uh, Daylight Time. Um, we will uh, continue on with Top Solid Design topics at that time. Have a good lunch.